Hi there, this is Steve Robinson from the Middleware Shop. This video is uh, designed to show the quality of my PowerPoint uh, presentations which support um, the Web2 application server how-to guides which come with uh, the Middleware Shop's courses. Um, basically all my courses have detailed how-to guides in PDF format which are downloadable as part of your uh, membership and um, I thought it'd be uh, good to show people what the PowerPoints look like and provide um, some sort of insights into the quality of my materials. So what I'm going to do for this particular module is to cover WebSphere Application Server version 8 silent installation. Um, WebSphere Application Server can be called WAS, that's W-A-S, so I'm going to use WAS a lot uh, to say saying web sphere application server. Um, why would you want to do a silent installation? Well, in reality, uh, doing a GUI based installation is not uh, always viable due to the fact you may not have some sort of X Windows uh, environment set up on your Linux or AIX environments. Uh, you may find that uh, even if they do have them, you might have to use the network to get an X session and therefore. Uh, you know, performance is slow, uh, you may not have appropriate rights or permissions, X Windows may not even be installed by your system admin team. So you need to be able to uh, perform an installation without a GUI. Secondly, we'd like to automate installations and so if we can do an installation via a script uh, or a command line then Obviously, we can uh, augment that installation into a set of installation scripts, which provide repeatable uh, actions and repeatable installations that you know apply the same standards every time. Uh, one of the most common issues in uh, building uh, a promotional model uh, where WebSphere is typically existing is that you'll get different naming conventions used by different individuals, maybe due to lack of understanding or lack of documentation or maybe just levels of product knowledge and so therefore if you have automation you can uh, essentially control that um, and enforce a consistent approach. So what we're going to do is going to look at two parts. One is how to install in silent mode and how to create profiles in silent mode. Now for my first uh, couple of videos um, we're not going to discuss the profile creation. It's the same in WebSphere 7 and uh, there's no real change. A lot of that information is actually on my blog, which is available at blog.websphere.tools.com. So um, I will have two videos probably to finish this module because it'll take about 20 minutes to go through. Uh, so you might have to look for more than one YouTube video to complete this module. Basically, we're going to look at the overview of setting up how we get this installation occurring. Um, we're going to cover a product called the IBM Installation Manager, seen as IM in my slides. We're going to look at a tool called uh, the IBM Packaging Utility, which is not a well-known tool, but very useful. We're going to create a local repository, which can then be used um, to uh, copy over to a production server. As part of our silent installation, we're going to use IBM Installation Manager as a GUI and record a response file. That response file is then used against the repository to perform an actual installation. Uh, we'll look at uh, what it looks like to install WAS um, and uh, maybe at some point in the future I'll provide a quick video on how to use Manage Profiles command, which as I said is, is on most of my websites. There's an example somewhere. Um, we've got the middleware shop.com, websphertools.com, blog.websphertools.com are three of my main sites. I have many others. Uh, I'm sure you've probably seen those before. So what is silent mode? Well, basically we're going to uh, install without a GUI. It's not interactive, meaning that the instructions are preset and it just goes about the job. We do this because it's faster, saves us manual effort. And as we've already said, and what I've already said and stated earlier is that we have 
the ability to have builds done or you know deployments or installations done exactly the same way every time due to the fact we are using a response file. Um, typically what you'll do is you create a, you'll create some sort of test environment or test server where you'll perform a installation in an environment that's similar to production. What I mean here is the LPAR, if it's AIX, would be you know installed the same way so you can record uh, the installation to the appropriate uh, file systems and then uh, distribute that response file and customize it maybe for you know local host information etc or naming conventions and then you move that um, recorded uh, installation and the and if appropriate the, the repository to a production server uh, something that's very new in Webster version 8 is this whole concept of using the IBM installation manager it wasn't available in version 7 but it is a uh, tool that is now used in many IBM products. Rational Application Developer is a classic example, it uses the same installation tool, uh, IBM Installation Manager. And so therefore, most installations are now using the same tool. So it's the same interface. It looks the same, acts the same, and essentially um, performs the same. And so it's like more like a unified installer rather than having a separate installer for every single product and then also having a separate installer for every single version of that product and operating system um, architecture for that product as well. Uh, as I've said, it's um, something that um, is common um, so that we don't have to have different installers. Another point which is quite interesting is that we do have to install IBM installation on target machine where we're going to perform a silent installation and that's uh, Something that not everyone might realize, but uh, you know, all we're doing in the first instance is recording a response file, but we still need a tool to run that response file and actually perform the work against a repository to provide an actual installation. Where do we get the installation manager from? Well, we can see this URL. Um, you can do a search online. Um, this was the latest version at the time I screen captured it. Um, it was probably a couple of months back, so um, you have to download that and install it. This is just an example here in red showing the Linux version, but there are other platforms. Uh, once downloaded, you unzip it and install it. Um, you'll have to agree to a license to download it. Um, you may even be asked to register for an IBM account if you don't already have one. And essentially, the zip file comes down. And you just untar it or unzip it or um, jar using jar possibly if you don't have access to zip on AIX. I mean, there's different ways of getting you know, decompression occurring. But you can see the idea is it will get installed in opt slash software slash IBM or some similar directory. It's up to you.